All right. Can we finally please stop pretending that there's anything real going on at GameStop? Last night, the video game retailer OG Meme Stock reported yet another unimpressive quarter, and the stock lost 12% of its value today. For years now, GameStop's been hanging in there in the teens to 20s, purely because CEO Ryan Cohen has a cult following among the Wall Street bets crowd that orchestrated the original short-busting campaign in 2021. But don't forget, money managers were shorting the stock so aggressively back then because there doesn't seem to be much future in a brick-and-mortar video game store. Nowadays, everybody just downloads the stuff stuff right from the web. You can actually do that through GameStop now, too. But you don't need to, and we haven't heard a particularly compelling reason for why you'd want to. Then the mainstreamers came in, crushed the shorts, and briefly sent the stock into the stratosphere, allowing the company to raise money by selling a ton of new shares. However, nothing's really changed on the fundamental side. In fact, GameStop doesn't even hold quarterly conference calls anymore, not even the sham conference calls they were doing in 2022, when they just read the results and refuse to take questions. Now they just give you the numbers, and that's it. Lots of luck. They know the numbers don't matter to their core shareholder base, but in case you're interested, GameStop delivered a massive revenue miss, sales down 31% year over year, mostly because fewer and fewer people buying games from the store. At the same time, the company posted a surprise profit, sort of. GameStop's operating loss was worse than expected, but because of nearly $40 million in interest income, they had a pre-tax profit of $17.5 million, which translated to a penny per, sh- or per share. Ooh, not bad. So what gave them uh, the beat, though? It was their cash hoard. The core business remains a money loser. They get interest on their cash. So the stock plummeted today, but I don't think it has much to do with the numbers. At the end of the day, GameStop tries to make a living selling consoles and accessories because people buy their games online. But the problem with that is it's been four years since the latest consoles launched. So there's a lot less demand. Everybody knew that already anyway. As I see it, GameStop's core business doesn't matter anymore. What matters is fundraising. It's very good at selling stock, if not video games. And last night, we got some new details that crushed the stock. Don't forget this. This spring, the stock had fallen to around 10 bucks, its lowest level since the meme stock craze. But then in May, it started rebounding because of one of the original meme stock instigators, Keith Gill, tweeted a meme of a guy playing video games leaning forward in his chair. I know that sounds crazy. But it was enough for the memesters to buy the stock hand over fist again, and they briefly sent it to $65 mid-May, its highest level in three years. This time, though, GameStop was ready to be opportunistic. After a few days of frenzy trading, they pre-announced their first quarter results and immediately announced an at-the-market ATM secondary offering of 45 million shares. That quickly sent the stock back down to the teens, but GameStop needs cash, and the people running the company are happy to take advantage of their cult stock following that seems to know nothing at all about the way the stock market works, but that's also good. In early June, the stock got moving higher again after Keith Gill posted on Reddit for the first time in a while, showing a screenshot of a massive GameStop position. He even planned to do a YouTube live stream right after the company released its full first quarter earnings report. Even though GameStop had already pre-announced, they still managed to give you a $100 million revenue miss. That's hard to do, along with a larger than expected loss, equally hard. And because the stock had gotten another boost from the meme shares, management announced another at-the-market offering, this time for 75 million shares. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Even for the eternally optimistic Wall Street bets crowd, it's become clear that every time they take GameStop up, management will step in to sell a bunch of new shares. Because, well, why, why shouldn't they? They're cannon fodder, but they seem to enjoy being cannon fire. Who would want to be cannon fodder? Anyway, I bring this up because last night we learned that GameStop raised $3.07 billion from those two secondaries, and now they're planning to sell another 20 million shares in the third at the market offering of the year. That's the real reason the stock got obliterated today. Like I said, they can't sell games, but man, do they ever know how to sell stock. At this point, you can't treat GameStop as a video game retailer. That business is slowly dying. Not even the bulls seem to care. Instead, this thing is a big pile of cash attached to an irrelevant retailer. And the bulls stick with it because they somehow still believe in what management can accomplish with that money. To be fair, there's a lot of money. GameStop exited the quarter of $4.2 billion in cash, cash equivalents, marketable securities. Maybe they add another $400 million or so with this new offering they announced last night. Meanwhile company has almost no debt because they paid off that with some of the secondaries back in 2021. Plus, hey, thanks to the interest on that cash, GameStop's not even losing money anymore. As long as they can somewhat stem the bleeding at the core business, they can simply collect interest from their cash and keep making modest amounts of money. They have way more money than they need to buy out a lot of the bad leases they have in malls and just fund the good stores, that is, if there are any. 
But man, with their business dwindling into obscurity, even as they're raised a big pile of cash, GameStop increasingly feels like a special purpose acquisition company. Yeah, SPAC! Remember, SPACs raise cash from public investors with the goal of making acquisitions that will turn them into a real business. The only problem, GameStop's a $4.2 billion pile of cash valued at $8.8 billion. No SPAC gets that kind of premium. Again, most of the people who still own this one are devout believers in their lord and savior, Ryan Cohen, the chairman and CEO. But I don't see what he's done to deserve that cult following. Still, the believers think he can acquire some combination of businesses for 4 to $5 billion, and then instantly they'll be worth roughly double what GameStop paid for them. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't take that bet. Honestly, at this point, why even bother to operate the stores? This morning, Michael Packer over at Wedbush, one of the two remaining analysts that covers GameStop, published a reaction to the quarter where he said, and I quote, we think it would be reasonable for management to close all of its stores and operate as a bank. GameStop has roughly $10 per share in cash now. But without a hint of any strategy that would reasonably deploy capital, we do not see why shares trade at two times cash, end quote. Couldn't agree more. Ultimately, GameStop always vulnerable to a short squeeze because based on whatever nonsense the ministers can temporarily cook up. And there's nothing about this business that is worth talking about. Bottom line, when you think of GameStop, you need to imagine a SPAC and not just any SPAC. It's a massively overvalued one that needs to purchase something incredible at an insane discount because that's the only way to justify this being a $20 stock rather than a $10 stock where it could be headed if management doesn't at least give us an outline of what its plans do. Hey, it doesn't have to be a full plan. Could be the mere idea of a plan. But so far, GameStop doesn't even have that. Or if they do, they sure haven't shared it with us. I want to take calls right now after completion of the GameStop story. Let's go to Craig in Missouri. Craig. Booyah, Jim. I just Booyah, wanted Craig. a real quick insight from you. I'm just starting a position with GoDaddy. And I'm just dipping my foot in, bought some shares around 150. I'm wondering with your insight, is this a good place to start or should I? Like I like that. I like your strategy. I like the fact that the stock has pulled back a little from its 52 week high. I like that the business is profitable. I think you're doing it absolutely right, and I congratulate you. Let's go to Ganesh in New Jersey. Ganesh. Hey, Jim. How are you? I am good, Ganesh. What's shaking? Yeah. What do you think about Intel at this decade low price? Um, I don't know if it's low. Uh, that would presume that it can't go lower. And I don't want to make that presumption. Let's go to Marcus in Oregon. Marcus. Hey, Jim. Good to hear from you. Hey, I really uh, enjoy you and David first thing in the morning. That's how I like Thank to you. start my day with you two guys. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in the club. I'm real happy with the stores Thank you. That we then please come to I please see. come to our club meeting tomorrow at noon. It's going to be a good one. Okay. You. you got it, man. So I'm looking at Albertson's bounce off the bottom here. Is that something we should look at? Even though uh, they yeah, got I think so. I think that they're not going to let that deal come through in the worst way. It doesn't matter. Uh, Albertson's already said, listen, we want to be for sale. It's a $10 billion company. Maybe someone comes and picks it up. In the meantime, it's just not that bad an operator. I do prefer Kroger, too. These guys should have realized that the FTC did not want to go off and do another supermarket deal that's going to make them look as stupid as an earlier Safeway deal. Why these two companies thought that the FTC would not remember that is beyond me, and it's certainly beyond their lawyers who probably charged them a fortune to make, give them an opinion that I gave them for free. I think at this point, GameStop trades more like a SPAC than a stock, and a mess we overvalue one at that, but who cares, right? It's Ryan Cohen, it's, it's ice cream cones, it's Kitty, it's all that stuff that means absolutely nothing. Now look, uh, how could Tim can do for your portfolio? Could it power it up? I'm going to do my homework on this to end and then give you my take. Then, as I come to you just blocks away from where the tragic events of 9-11 took place 23 years ago, I'm sharing my memories of that day and why it's so important that you never forget. And of course, all your calls, lightning around, stay with me. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.